Uh, good morning once again. Good morning. I just want to take this time to welcome you once again to this cooking class. I thank God for giving us once again this opportunity to be able to be at this place for the purpose of learning. And uh, I'm glad that uh, we are coming to the point of understanding why, why we are here and why we are taking time to learn all these things. It is for our own good and the good of others who are out there in darkness. And that's why God has called us to this place so that uh, we may get this information, we may get this knowledge and go out there and do the work. So yesterday, we were able to make what yesterday? We made bro uh, broccolis and uh, in coconut sauce and what else? Rice sticks. Rice sticks. And what did we use to make rice sticks? Rice flour. Rice flour. Uh -huh. Cornstarch. Uh -huh. uh, coconut. Coconut. Desiccated mm -hmm. coconut. What else? Coconut milk. Coconut milk was not there. It was coconut powder. Yeah. yeah. And so we thank the Lord for that. And I, I'm just hoping that uh, it is not just for the purpose of being here, but uh, after we leave this place, we are going to try something out. And I'll be glad even to receive some pictures. You can share pictures online, what you have tried to share, maybe ask questions where you have failed, and then you try. We said we need determination. We need to create that uh, passion. We need to have that interest and die interest that uh, we will love every day to try and make something. And uh, out of the recipes that we are trying, those are not our standard recipes. These are not standard recipes. It means that you can create something out of them. You can omit some of the ingredients or you can add some of the ingredients and still make something good. So today we are here to learn something. And remember from our 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 timetable, you know we are doing baking, uh, strong juices, and uh, we thank the Lord that today we'll be using some amazing juices, and we know that juices are very important in our health. They are very important in our lives, and uh, I don't know how many of us do juice at home. Someone will tell me I do not have a juicer, but you know you can juice without a juicer. Right? Mm. Yeah, sometimes you can pound these vegetables, pound something, add some warm water, and then you have your juice. Just a simple thought. And juicing is uh, an a very important part in our lifestyle. And it is one thing that we are going to incorporate as we go out there to do the work in the hygienic restaurants. We realize that uh, many of the diseases, we are going to uh, cure them using the juices. And these juices, we are going to use the uh, vegetables that are available. I know most of us, when we hear about juices, we think of some fruits that we cannot find around. We think of uh, those uh, juices that are found in the supermarkets. But we are talking of the simple juices that we can get from our garden. And in these two weeks, we are going to learn that uh, you do not need to have so much juice. You can juice from whatever is available in your garden. If you have black nightshade, that is the manatee you can use. You have pumpkin leaves, you can use. You have uh, black jack leaves, you can use. Depending on what purpose you want to use, the purpose why you want to use, depending on the disease you want to cure, depending on how, what you want your body, maybe you want some iron, you want some vitamin A, you want some vitamin C. So you realize that uh, everything that God made as a plant, as a purpose in our lives. And so I want to start by praying, and uh, I welcome you that we pray, and then we start. We can pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are here once again in this second day. We want to thank you, Lord, because you have been with us since yesterday until this moment, Lord. We want to learn how to use, we want to learn how to cook. And Lord, we know that we do not know all of these things. All the knowledge and the wisdom comes from you. You give the skills to those who are willing. And so we pray this day that you may impart to us 
the knowledge and the skills. We need to cultivate that passion. We need to have that interest. We need to do this work because we have been learning that time is not our side. And very soon, if we are not in, we are going to be counted as foolish writings. Going out there to do things when it is too late. Going to gather oil when it is too late. Yes, the time, a little time that you have given unto us, that we may gather as much as oil as we can for the time of a crisis that is ahead of us. Help every one of us to prepare. Some may prepare in the cooking department, others may prepare in food preservation, others may prepare in the garden, and so on, so on, depending on the talents that you've given unto us. We pray that you may give us that wisdom, that all of us may use that one talent, that many talents that you've given us to enhance and forward this work. For this we pray with faith in Jesus' name. Amen. So before we start using, we are going to multitask a little bit. And so I'm going to start by preparing some uh, cauliflower stew. Remember, in our restaurants, we'll be making a lot of stews of different kinds. So the recipes that I'm giving, especially the one for yesterday, you can uh, substitute broccoli with maybe some uh, beans, broccoli with some cauliflower, broccoli with some uh, lentils, and you remain with the coconut sauce. Maybe you have it now, it is lentils in coconut sauce, it is bean in coconut sauce, and so on and so on, right? Yeah. And so today we want to use uh, a little bit different method and prepare some cauliflower stew. Many of us, some of us have not tasted cauliflower, and so today we are going to have a privilege of tasting and knowing how to make a nice, a nice, a nice stew out of these cauliflowers. And what we are going to use, the main ingredients we have is cauliflower. This is how they look like. And we say that uh, these are plants that you can have at your home. You can plant, they just grow. We have grown them up there and they do not need much of spraying. But then the coconuts and the broccoli have realized they do not need much spray. They are ready. They, they, they attack the diseases most of the time by themselves, especially if you prepare the ground well, you have put enough manure, you do not have problems with the pest and uh, other uh, problems. So, this is our first ingredient. We will have some garlic and some bread onions. We will have some blended tomatoes. Today we are using the blended. There's a reason why we are using the blended. We are going to know that in a few. We are going to use bay leaves. How many of us know bay leaves? This is how they look like. And the bay leaves, you can buy them in the supermarket. They are just natural. They are just bay leaves, leaves that are just dry, nothing added. And uh, those who can get the plants, there are people who sell the, the seedlings. You can plant the, the plants and uh, have fresh bay leaves to use. So we are going to use the bay leaves in our stew. If you do not have it, you can omit it. It is not a must you have it. As I've said, these, these are not standard recipes that you must have everything on board for you to make something. So you can invent, you can recreate, you can have, you can remove some, and you can substitute with what you have, okay? So the other thing we are going to use is some cornstarch. And we say cornstarch in this case is going to help us as a thickening agent. We need some thick soup. Have you gone somewhere and you are served some water, boiled water soup? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do not want that in our guinea restaurant. We need some soup that, so the soup that you eat rather than you, dr you are drinking, okay? Yeah. That is what you want. And now the corn flour or corn that is going to help us do that. And uh, we have some celery. Celery? We do not celery? Yeah, those who, are, who do not know celery, you can go up there. Under the guava tree, there are a lot of celery there. So we are using the celery sticks. I have already chopped some, but this was just to show you. And some uh, uh, cilantro or coriander leaves, we have them there. What else are we going to use? Some salt. 
and of course some water. That is how we are going to use it. It's a very, very, very simple uh, recipe. And so we are going to start. Some Someone can help me with uh, some oil. Yeah, and oil. And so we are going to start to make that. As that will be cooking, we'll be preparing the juice. Any question up to that point? You can use the leaves, but uh, sometimes the leaves can be bitter. If you could. So, in cooking, I prefer the, the, the sticks or the stems. But if you are juicing, just use everything. You can add something to just make it amazing. But uh, in cooking, because you do not know the people you are cooking for, if they like some bitter sour things, so you rather choose to omit the leaves at this point. So, as we wait the oil, any other question? So, if there is no question, we are going to start. Oh, so we, we are starting with the onion and the garlic. You can have some green onion aside for garnishing at the end. Garnishing. We have some cilantro. Just put everything together. This, this is cilantro, coriander leaves. And then I forgot to tell you, we also have some uh, baby papers, the red and the green. So this one we are going to put just a half we have for some water. Let this simmer for like one or two minutes, and as it does that, let us see the next what we have on board. We are making a mango juice and a kiwi juice. Ever made that before? A green kale juice. These are kales. So starting with the mango. We have the mangoes, very ripe. We have some chia seeds. You see some chia seeds? We have some mint leaves. These are pineapple mints mixed with uh, some. Uh, this type of mint. They are all mints. I'm just forgetting the name of one. Mint, mint, mint. This is pineapple mint. And so we are going to mix with this. We have some lemons and some oranges. And so we are going to use lemon and uh, orange juice to blend the mango with some water. So we are going to make this out of uh, the oranges and the lemon. You can help me something to help me squeeze the oranges. So we are going to squeeze the juice out of the oranges and the lemons. And then we are going to add that to our mangoes. Okay? And then, you know, 
the oranges and uh, the lemons are loaded with a lot of vitamin C and even the mangoes they have some and they also have some good amount of fiber they will help in digestion they will help in uh, fighting the free radicals in the body because they have a lot of antioxidants they're antioxidants so back to our stew at this point i'm going to add my blended tomato blended tomato and then mix some corn flour, corn starch with some water. Just a little bit. Don't put a lot because if you put a lot, it is going to be very thick. So you just put a little bit. Add some salt. And then add some bay leaves. And then now let it simmer or boil for some minutes. Now back to our juice. So we said we are going to make some orange. And I'm going to use this simple gadget to make my orange juice. one you can buy it from those people selling utensils or from the supermarket I bought it at 50 book some places you can get it at 100 book and uh, it can help you to squeeze oranges and lemons at all is it and so what we are going to do we are using a blender with the, the mangoes you cannot use a, a juicer because it does not have a, a clear liquid if you are going to use a juicer you are going to extract a very little juice so we are going to use a blender to blend it you can add some little ginger very little you know ginger is good we are told ginger is like a, a lead herb you just include it in all you are using your smoothies, just add it there. Have your mint. Acid. Oh. Oh, the juice in there. Oh. Add 
Yes, some water. Don't put a lot of mint because we do not want the end product to be green. We still want it to retain it is it is color, but we want to have a bit of taste of the oranges and the lemons without them still interfering with the taste of the mangoes. So you make sure that you retain every taste of every fruit that you have used. Now this is enough. Then we are going to blend this up. that sour taste but in this case we are going to have it like that and our mango juice is just ready same as that now the next thing you have to do is that in the restaurant make sure that you invest invest in uh, serving serving dishes because you will not just be pouring your juices to normal cups plastic cups and take them to the customer the customer needs something appetizing Mm. So have some good serving glasses. Can you Remy, they think they can hear you. You can be heard. Okay, I'm trying to <laughs> shout. Try to shout. So make sure you invest in, in some good serving plates, serving glasses, serving spoons, everything. Because It will make your your restaurant appear simple, yet it is classy, smart, neat, and all that. Can you hold that? Can you hold it at the camera so that uh, near you the, see near the camera? How does it look? It is very nice, and then you can just present it in the presenting. I just want to present it. You just have to be creative. That's all. What is that? This is a meat, a meat leaf. Also, in the presentation, mine is a bit thick. You can uh, make yours. You had some water. We are learning about food presentation. You are so busy to cook. have something there to show that uh, that is a uh, mango and maybe some orange and maybe you can have a piece of lemon at the top if you wish and maybe have some 
Let's tell you. Look at that presentation. Can somebody hold? If you know you can hold it without pouring it, you can hold it. Just carry it nicely to the camera. Okay, so this is uh, Brother Weekly serving the customer. And uh, you, you see how neat he is. And then you see, look at the meal, and then the person correlates with the meal itself. Thank you for the meal today. Amen. Now you can have that. This is one of the simple presentation that you can have. Imagine serving the customer a meal like this. And then you tell the customer, uh, I'm going to charge you 200 shillings. No, it cannot be. <laughs> we took half of this at 200. So how can this be 200? I'm just saying. <laughs> and then I was just challenging you. 200 shillings. And then the customer is very much happy. Yeah. Sometimes some good customer will tell you, take even the change. Yeah. Expand the work. You are doing a good work. Amen. Right? Yeah. And then even you can sprinkle some chia seeds still at the top. It's still part of the presentation. That will tell the customer that they use are some chia seeds. And we know that chia seeds, they are very powerful for the brain support. They have some omega fats which we need in our bodies. And they are very versatile. That is, you can have them anywhere that you want. You can have them in every smoothie that you're making. In juices, you can drink them. You can bake with them. You can have them in your salads and so on and so on and so on. So that is our mango juice. You can see traces of uh, some mint. You can see traces of some mint inside and some chia seeds, yes. and that makes it look beautiful than adding just a clear, normal mango juice, plain one. The, 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 the addition of the chia seeds and the mint leaves gives, gives it some an, uh, a look that is uh, more attractive and more advanced than when you have it plain. So at this point, going back to my stew, which I believe now it has thickened, I'm going to add my cold flour. Add your cold flour. If you see your soup is not thick enough, you just add some cornstarch and to ensure that it gets your soup thick. And, and yes, I have just to interrupt. Yesterday we had uh, my two friends coming here who said that they were eating meat until we went to show them that they were eating broccoli in the garden. Okay. And so you can substitute these things, no one will ever want meat, because if they can believe they are eating meat, then you have done away with the meat. Yeah. So we are done with that part. Now we are going to move to the next uh, juice, and then that is the green juice. And with the green juice, we have our curly kels. I prefer this one, curly kels. They are just there outside. This ones, and the good thing about this one is that they are low in acid. So if you have people that have a problem with the pe uh, peptic ulcers, uh, heart burns, and so on, those stomach problems, give them this ones. And they are good also for juicing than the other one. So you can invest and plant this one for juicing and for your salads. Yeah, very good. And uh, I have mixed this with some celery, uh, some lettuce. The lettuce, they are very good also. All these things, they are filled with a lot of vitamin K. They have a lot of iron. They have a lot of vitamin C. They have a lot of uh, properties and minerals that our body needs. And if we are fighting diseases, these are the best things to go by. 
And for this curly gas, we are going to use some apples just to sweeten them a little. Apple is one of the fruits that you can go, you can mix with the vegetables easily. It just blends so well. We are going to use some ginger and some lemon and some cucumbers. And that is going to be one powerful juice, green juice, good one. Okay? So let me prepare for that. Can we place on table? Yeah, of course. Just pray this thing doesn't fall down. But we are going to return the plate. Yeah. So, this one, I'll take to the customer. So I'm using a slow juicer. We have different types of juices. We have the normal, it is called the centrifugal juicer. It is good. It does the good work of juicing. But uh, this one is the best. Any type of a slow or cold press juicer. Why? Because it, your juices do not get oxidized. The ones, the, the, the centrifugal ones, the ones that you know, they use a lot of heat to produce the juice. That heat affects some of the nutrients, especially their unstable vitamins like vitamin C. So this one is a cold press. That means that when it uses a, a low power, because this one is uh, around 150 watts, and the other ones, they are around 400, 400 watts and above. So they use a lot of it to produce the juice. So this one is the best because it retains, the juice retains all the vitamins and the minerals. There is nothing that is destroyed. There's nothing that is affected. And so you can make your juice here knowing that you have everything in the juice intact. But when you use the other one, some of the vitamins like vitamin C, it is not there when you're making the juice. It gets oxidized very fast. So we are using the snow juicer. And the good thing is that it is it uses low power, so you can use it with a solar panel. Yeah. You have solar panels so for 150 use. watts, you can use it, which is not much expensive. Yeah. So we are going to start with our babies. We just add them inside. One of the things we shall have to learn is how to operate the machines. Because you can easily lose them. So when you are using this, you have to cut whatever you are using into small pieces so that you do not affect your juicer. And make sure that uh, you put, you don't put everything at once, like you put all the veggies and then the cucumbers and then, no, we want to have the mixture. Un a unified mixture. So you will put some veggies, some apples, some cucumbers, then some lemon, some ginger, 
at the same time. Measure of each. So what do you prefer, to be the worker or the custom? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> eh? Custom. Okay. <laughs> okay, I need the picture near the camera. Mm -hmm. Okay, just um, a minute. Okay, I got it. Let me just feel it and then I can want it. Good things are not filled up to the brim. Mm -hmm. That is okay. For presentation, it is not okay. Every, how is the going? Mm
Let's see how we are going to present this to the customer. That is to make the customer understand what they are taking with the patient. Knife. Ah, sorry. Okay, we have now to change that. Give me very much. Change the color of everything. If you have a good sliced lemon, you can just turn it somewhere there. My, mine is not firm. You can just hang it somewhere there or just put it somewhere. You just be wretched. So can somebody present it? Still the, smart, the smart man can present it. <laughs> <laughs> it was with smile. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is again Brother Weekly serving us with the uh, juice. And so that is it and all of you are welcome to our hygienic restaurant feel at home welcome thank you yeah. as simple as that sometimes you can sprinkle some chia seeds there now that is it how simple is that very simple and so back to our stew the stew is ready how did the last ingredient that we left? <laughs> Someone can help you with that plate to serve. By the way, the, 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 the cooks should maintain a high discipline. You only know the food is good by the smell, not by tasting. <laughs> don't, don't snack the whole day while. You know when you are working in the hygienic restaurant, you, you will be in danger of snacking the whole day. Mm -hmm. Tasting this, is it okay? And no. You only taste by the smell, mm -hmm. the brain, to know if the food is okay. <laughs> Yeah, just uh, okay, near the camera. Ah, 
there it is. Good, thank you. Now to serve it. So this one you can serve with your chapatis, you can serve with some roasted potatoes, some rice, some rice bars, rice sticks, some bananas, and so on and so on. Yes. One who wants to be Ugali, you can be Ugali. Rice. Yeah, rice goes well. And so on. Or you can just eat it alone. Mm. Yeah. So tell me, someone comes to your restaurant and you serve him or uh, such a food. He will never go to the next hotel. He will always be coming back. Because have you seen those people when they go to the hotel, the first thing is they take pictures of the food yeah. because the foods look good. Yeah. There are hotels that you go oh. in and eat and you will never imagine of taking a picture because of how the food looks like. Yeah. Yeah. One time I ate, I ate uh, donkey. Yeah, so we thank the Lord for this. <laughs> so pre food presentation is the key to any restaurant. It is one key that will determine if you will have customers coming back or they will not be coming back. So make sure you invest in good plates, serving dishes. It is very important. Don't have those. You can have, and it is good to have neutral colors. Don't go to an hotel, you are serving food with a plate with black, green, and yellow, and then your food is green total di disaster. So I have some neutral colors, good uh, taste of uh, utensils, and then people will just appreciate. These are some of the things people look for in the hotels. People need that good serene, some good amphias, somewhere they can just appreciate everything they are paying for. Okay? And so when you go to those five-star hotels, you pay for the plates, you pay for the presentation, you just pay for everything. That's why you pay so expensive. Not that the food is so amazing or expensive or something. It is because of the effort, the passion that people put behind uh, bringing that food on the table. So we thank the Lord. We are come to the end of this. We are going to meet again tomorrow, same time, same place. God bless you all. And let's read up. There is a question we are going to pray. Yes. Why did you need uh, the blender? We needed to have that. You see the type, the color of the soup? Yeah. It is yeah. red. Yeah. If you use like we used yesterday, it is going to be red, but not this red. It will be like the yesterday, like orange like. Mm -hmm. And that is not what we wanted. And then when you blend the tomatoes, you know, have you? serve someone food with the tomatoes that you can see yeah. there are some foods that do not need that especially now like this food tomatoes that you can pick they are un uncooked and such and such so to avoid that just bend your tomatoes have a thick soup and a nice color of soup because the cornflower are white we needed something that can blend that color yeah so i want us to pray Thank you once again, our dear Master, for this moment that we have had to learn. The juices and even the stew, Lord, we know that we need them in our lives, not only in their hygienic restaurants, but even in our homes, to break that monotony of eating same things each and every day. Forgive us when we have gone wrong and uh, help us that what we have not done right, we may learn, and Lord, we may be able to do it right next time. That and forgive us all our sins for this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs>